Hi, it's Susan. I have a quick little tutorial for you today. What if you could take cheap acrylic yarn and turn it into wired pieces of fiber that you could use in various ways on your art projects. And you're going to be able to use up a lot of those little scraps of things like threads that you have hanging around. If you stick around to the end, I will show you an easy way to get some of the very thin wire that you probably already have in your crafting space. So this came about because I bought some um, fiber covered wire to use on a project and I just fell in love with using it. Uh, you know, it's it you can bend it in whatever shape you want and then you can tack it down with stitches if you want. You can glue it down, you can use it on a tag. You can do, use it in so many different ways, but it is not cheap. And I thought, well, this should be a pretty easy thing to do. And so the first thing I did is I grabbed some of my cordage and just wrapped wire around it. And that works fine, but it's like, maybe I could use some of my stuff up. And so I just went to my scraps and Actually, the first thing I did is I went to this, which is not a color way that I would normally use. This came with one of my looms that I bought. And I just, you know, started wrapping it around the wire. And I thought, well, you know, that's kind of boring. Let's see, there's one here. This one is this green acrylic yarn. This is four ply, this is three ply, that's as much as I know about it. This is just the green yarn wrapped around the wire, nothing done to it. This is the same yarn, but what I have done is separate it out so that it's very similar to wool roving. Now if you have wool roving, that will work awesome on this, but you don't need it. You can do it with your cheap stuff. So here's um, all I did to get started. I had some very thin wire and I've got this yarn that didn't excite me and I just cut a piece of the yarn and I separate the plies. This one's three ply. And then I want to get it like this. So you just pull it apart. You just keep pulling it apart until you get nice and fuzzy. And it resembles wool roving and you'll see me use this sort of thing a lot in my Just Because books or my clusters. You don't have to bring it, you know, it doesn't have to get separated in one big piece. In fact, it's better if it doesn't because it's going to adhere to the wire a lot better. This is another lesson in letting go of perfection. You don't want this to be perfect, or at least I don't want it to be perfect. If you want to be perfect, go buy the expensive stuff that's probably made by some machine. All right. Then, for me, the hardest thing is getting getting it started, just trying to get the fibers to stick to the wire because I'm not using any glue. Feel free to use some glue or come up with some other great idea, which you can tell me in the comments. I just wet my fingers, pick up a little bit, and just kind of rub it back and forth until I get something like that. Stick the wire in there a little bit. And then I'm just gonna bend the wire back on itself just so I'm not poking myself. And it's just to get things started. And then it's, it's so simple. I mean, it's so simple. You just twist. And I like it when it kind of gets bumpy like this. I also like it when you can see a little bit of the wire. Can you see that? A little bit of the wire going through because it gets a little shiny. And so I'm just twisting it really tight. Now you could put glue on here, of course, but it's going to change the texture of the fibers. I've got a thick piece, so I'm going to get a nice bump here especially if I don't let it slide down so much. I'm just like really hooked on imperfect fibers lately. So I just grabbed another chunk. I'm going to wet my fingers and just start twisting. 
Now you need to keep in mind if you're making a big long piece of this, it is going to come apart, you know, when you cut it. So you need to be careful. You also need to be careful when working with this really thin wire that if you go back and forth at an angle with it um, over and over again, it is going to break just like you cut it with a pair of scissors. But you could use a thicker wire too. This just happened to be what I have and kind of what I didn't want something that was going to be really heavy. Grab some more fibers, wet my fingers. And just twist, twist, twist. And then when I decide that I want, I have enough, I'm just going to cut the wire. And you got that sharp edge there. So I'm gonna wet my fingers again. And I'm just gonna twist. Make another kind of knot with the fiber and then I'm going to turn it back on itself and twist some more. It's not precise, but I wasn't going for precise. There we go. I just think this is so much more interesting than just a piece of yarn. And the thickness of the wire is going to change too. You could also use, you know, a much thicker wire and do this. But see, I grabbed my threads. All those threads that we have, you know, either from um, cutting fabric or the, the loose ends of something after you're done sewing. And it's just the same thing. I just did the exact same thing. And I'm just twisting the wire. And I'm just twisting the threads on the wire. And now I've got this. Like I said, this was the green yarn full strength. And there's, I don't know if you can see it, but there is a little bit of the gold wire showing through. And I just think that kind of dresses it up a little bit. And then I have this very thin one. I stripped this into the four layers that you get. And you just pull that apart and you get the four layers. Coated the wire with that. Now, going back over it again, I can, and this is one where I might actually use a dab of glue if I wanted to make it like bumpy in in some spots and then leave it thin and then I could make it bumpy again. Another fiber you could use on it would be, so many of us use sari silk and you have all the little scraps of sari stuff that comes off. Well, look at the wonderful, this actually works a lot like roving. Just the wonderful um, textured. But look at that, you get this really interesting bumpy fiber and because it's on this thin wire, you can just do all kinds of things with it. I mean, how cool is that, right? Very cool. And I bet you have some wired ribbon in your studio, right? And the wire that's in these is very, very thin and super easy to pull out of the ribbon, like so. And now I've got a nice long piece of thin ribbon. The only thing you have to be really careful about with this is that um, it does break very easily, you know, so get it wrapped, you know, do it and then get it wrapped or just, you know, don't, because if you bend it, you could actually go back and forth three or four times and it's going to break even without a pair of scissors. Well, now that you've got this, you can take some of those beads with the really big holes and they're still going to go through here. Look at that. Isn't that a lot more interesting? So I hope you find this fun and you learned something. Let me know down in the comments. If you try it, uh, come share in the Facebook group. If you're not already a member, I would love to have you join us there where we share all kinds of arts and crafts and creative conversation happens just about every day. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye for now.